welcome to round two of the Motorsports UK British Rallycross Championship Five Nations Trophy presented by Cooper Tyres. The sun is out, it's a glorious day, the cars are out practicing and if round one is anything to go by, we've got a fantastic day of racing that lies ahead. How great is it to be back? It's amazing, like, missed everything last year with the pandemic. The noise, the atmosphere, it's just beautiful to be back here. When you're here as a family, it's really nice to be part of that community, that family environment. So it's great to be back here and supporting the team. It's good to be back out and about and enjoying some racing. It's good to get the little one out and about too. It's amazing, it's been such a long time away. It's just Good to be back and good to have spectators around again. Absolutely fantastic. And the Five Nations did a really great job getting things up and running during COVID. You know, a few spectators here, but nobody's crowded, everyone's spread out. The weather's made it an absolutely fantastic day. Jurassic George, are you having a roaringly good time? Supercars semi-final one. The lights go green, we go racing. A slow start by Julian Godfrey. Look at the white fiesta on the second row of the grid as Roger Thomas dives for the joker lap straight away to get that longer, slower lap that you must do once in the race to get it out of the way early. So the reigning champion it is, Mark Donnelly there, who leads the way, and Roberts Vittles, who won the opening round of the championship here. He's the man there in second place. The Latvian heads up Harry Hill for the first time race leader is getting away. Mark Donnelly then trying to build that gap over the very impressive 18-year-old Roberts Vittles who's come out of the junior ranks into supercars and looked so, so at home in the first round of the championship. Vittles goes for the joker lap. Julian Godfrey goes past him and also Roger Thomas is going to get past him as well. So the Welshman really charging. We didn't see him in the opening round of the championship but Roger Thomas now going great guns. Vittles all over the back of Thomas and they've caught up to Mark Donnelly. Now Donnelly might have a problem, the pace is ebbing away. Look, Thomas almost collects him as he charges by. There's nothing Donnelly can do to fend off the challenge. Vittles goes past him as well. So Roger Thomas versus Roberts Vittles and look, Mark Donnelly, it's like he's got a complete lack of power. He's just heading round now to the end to try to salvage a result. Thomas versus Vittles through the hairpin. A lot more exuberance in the driving style is Roger Thomas. The Fiesta though charges downhill, heads towards the paddock, flicks it sideways, drifts it beautifully onto the loose. Big, big crowd at Lyddon, which is great to see, and flame underneath Roger Thomas's car. He takes the chequered flag, but the winner is ablaze. Roger Thomas gets to the end of semi-final one with a win but straight away has to park it and the marshals get the fire extinguishers out. High drama right at the very end. Well, let's catch up, shall we, with the winner of the first of the semi-finals in the supercars, Roger Thomas. No doubt a very happy driver, but it came with a bit of drama. What happened at the end? Uh, I've, got, I've got no idea, to be honest. Across the finishing line, I thought, yes, we've got the win. <laughs> and as I got sort of round the, the right-hand bender, everybody was waving, stop, stop. So, And then as I stopped, the smoke came up, so... Bit of a fire, apparently. What's the initial reaction? Everything OK, though, for the final? Um, well, I had a quick look. I'm not a mechanic, but it looks nothing looked burnt. So, fingers crossed. Yeah, be fingers crossed, because yeah. I know you want to get on on that win and oh, try yeah. and bag that silverware, right? Absolutely, absolutely. We're racing in semi-final two, then, for the supercars. The target time, if you like, that of Roger Thomas, 4 minutes 27. Beat that, you've gone quicker, you should be good for pole position. Now, who is going to go faster? Because it is, at the moment, Ollie O'Donovan that leads from Derek Towhill as they dance their way through the loose. Andy Scott's in a big, big hurry. Joker lap served. Scott ahead of Towhill now. Andy Scott was in the wars in round one. Clash coming off the Joker lap with Ollie O'Donovan in the semi-finals. A contact there, Derek Towhill gets into the back of him. That does not help Andy Scott. Look, it pushes the bodywork against the tyres and the smoke coming from the left rear corner now through Paddock. Andy Scott, though, is charging. Scott 
in the very distinctive Dayglow nose car there. Look right on the back of Tristan Avedon, the multiple super national champion, and he goes through on the inside, almost takes him with him as he slides across the front. But Scott is on a mission. The other one to watch in this is Ollie O'Donovan. Look there in the Fiesta third because he is closing onto the back of Avondon Citroen. Across the loose at Chessons they come. It's far faster, far smoother than it ever used to be. It was slippy, it was a chalky surface. Now it's almost just like broken tarmac as there through the devil's elbow goes Andy Scott. The Albatech car looking really strong as Avondon drifts out wide. Nose to tail now. Avondon has fought back, but what can he do about Andy Scott? Ollie O'Donovan, double OD in third place, starting to fall away just a little now. Avondon out wide through the elbow. Derek Tohill to the outside of O'Donovan and easily goes past him. So the Irishman, European class champion, triple Irish champ as well, Derek Tohill, very accomplished driver, moves through. Good to have Derek Tohill back after being forced to sit out last season because of all the COVID travel dramas that went with motorsport. Check and flag flies. Andy Scott wins semi-final two and goes faster than Roger Thomas. Well, let's get reaction, shall we, from the winner of the second semi-final under supercars, Andy Scott. Andy, congratulations. Job well done. You must be pleased with that. Yeah, I mean, I think we just showed the potential that we've had all weekend. Got a clean run, maybe not the best start, but... Uh, we consistently put in good lap times and uh, managed to pull the win off. I know that you've been a bit frustrated this weekend at Lyddon Hill, but it's suddenly coming together now as we get ever closer to that final. Absolutely. I mean, I don't know whose was the fastest final, the first or the second one, so presumably I'm either one or two on the grid. So, yeah, it's all to play for. Let's move on to the first of the finals of the day. Let's start with the super retro class. Great mix of cars here. John Cross, the man that won the opening round of the championship here at Lyddon. He's the man on pole position. He's got Barry Stewart's Porsche, Ray Morgan's Ford Escort to factor into this as well. Vince Bristow, spectacular BMW on the outside there as the lights go to green. Good start by John Cross in the Lancia then. He was quickest in Q1 and Q2. Barry Stewart there, look, in the bewinged Porsche, fastest in Q3. Vince Bristow round the outside, he goes third, and Ray Morgan in the ex-Mark Lloyd Escort, the Mark III Escort rear-wheel drive car comes through on the inside. Does Ray Morgan get ahead? Yes, he does then. So the all-white Escort goes third, there it is. 176, Steve Pasco there with his Escort Cosworth. John Cross though leads Barry Stewart and the gap is widening between the top two as they go through Chessons. If anything now, Ray Morgan is the man to watch in the Escort, closing perhaps onto the tail of the Porsche. But that Porsche has got so much power on a dry road today. You can see the way Barry Stewart just gobbles up the real estate, closes up onto the back of the leader. Yellow flags and paddock, John Cross goes through. Barry Stewart hanging on to second. Ray Morgan, great ambassador for Rally Cross, huge enthusiast. He's there in third. And then Vince Bristow's BMW fourth starting to fall away a little bit now. The three leaders from the loose back to tarmac. Barry Stewart trying to attack John Cross with the Lancia and also fend off Ray Morgan in the escort as they climb the hill once more. John Cross, who came into Rally Cross in the 70s, he was a mainstay through the 70s and the 80s, had a long, long layoff, came back a few years ago, built this Lancia Stratos and has been a great asset to the super retro class. Really good mix of car that we have. Stratos used to do great things in its prime in the European Championship in the hands of Andy Benzer, amongst others. Check and flag flies. John Cross wins the super retro final from Barry Stewart and Ray Morgan third. It's Vince Bristow fourth ahead of Paul Pasco and Richard Moroni sixth. So great drive by John Cross. He scores the race win. Checkered flag waves to the last handful of cars to come through. But it's John Cross that makes it two out of two in Super Retro Rally Cross. Barry Stewart second ahead of Ray Morgan. Vince Bristow fourth with Paul Pascoe and Richard Moroni for sixth place. Two out of two for a very happy John Cross. Well, quite an incident in Q1 in the BMW Mini. So let's catch up and find out more with Tom Constantine. Tom, talk me through it. Just looking at your car, quite a lot of damage. What went wrong? Yeah, it's... Uh... It's not been the best start. Um, no, we were just we were just coming through the chicane. Um, I think it was lap two or three, and uh, I felt I felt something wrong under, under my right foot with the throttle pedal, and um, I didn't think a lot of it. But I, I soon noticed just as we came to the gravel. I think that what's happened is the throttle pedal unit snapped, 
and it's gone underneath the brake pedal. So basically, when we've hit the brakes to come into the corner, it's dragged the throttle cable and it's held the throttle wide open. So I tried lifting off the brakes for the handbrake, clutch, everything, but I just couldn't stop it. I mean, yeah, we, we hit the wall fairly hard, it's rolled over up on our, on my roof, but yeah. A uh, brand new car for this weekend. Unfortunately, I've not been able to do it justice. So, um, bit, not the best weekend, but I'm sure we'll be back. The BMW Mini final, six laps ahead of us. Good to go. The lights change, and away they blast. One car slow away, but Dave Bellaby versus David Ellis. They have been the two star drivers throughout the day, and it's going to be Dave Bellaby who is in daughter Drew's car, new mum Drew Bellaby, and Dave won the opening round of the championship. The opposition here is going to come from Darren Bleasdale as well because he was fourth in the opening round from Lydon and the cars bounced their way from that joker lap back onto the normal lap. There, through into second place goes David Ellis, moves himself up past Steve Brown, the former single venue rallies man in the yellow car. Brown fights back though as they climb the hill. Dave Bellamy trying to get away, hugely experienced is Dave, whether it's in these or super nationals or even supercars. He knows what he's doing. The battle is on for second place. David Ellis versus Steve Brown. Brown not quite able to surge up the inside heading into Paddock. Bellamy trying to gap the opposition then as they flick through the chicane. Out of Paddock now. Briefly on to Tarmac and then they plunge to the loose once more at Chessons. Now some you'll see going for the Joker lap. Some did it on the opening lap of the race. Get it out of the way then you can charge on and try and catch up the time. Others do it right at the very end. Push on, try and build a gap that you can then lose on the last lap of the race. David Ellis, second. If anything, looks a little bit closer to Dave Bellaby this time around as they come out of the Devil's Elbow. Climb this very, very steep, hairy hill up towards the North Bend hairpin. Steve Brown turns through. Another driver returning to the BMW Minis and showing good pace here. Plunges downhill. It's a steep drop, it's a fast drop as well, and then the daunting right into Paddock, hit the loose as well. Cars dance their way across that section of the circuit. More squabbles rage on lower down, and there, heading for retirement, sadly, is Oliver Ford. So problems for Oliver Ford, he is out. Meantime, Dave Bellaby is still trying to stretch the advantage. Others going well, Abby McGuinness and Nick Abbott battling lower down the field. But there is the race leader. So Dave Bellaby in this six lapper climbs Harry Hill once again. And you can see now that David Ellis has shaken off Stephen Brown. So that gap second to third is widening. The gap between the top two is coming down. Is that going to give Ellis a chance before the end? He's certainly got the pace. He runs a little bit deep though, coming out of the hairpin. Plunges downhill once more. So through turns the race leader, Dave Bellamy, there with the rear wheels bucking into the air. David Ellis trying now to bring down that gap. Now, what can he do about Dave Bellamy? Questions are, can he get past on pure pace or is he going to have to use that joker lap to his advantage? He looks like he's got the speed coming off the loose here, doesn't he? Onto the tarmac once more. Set the car up now, going into the devil's elbow, but Dave Bellamy with all of that experience hanging onto the advantage. Dave Bellamy took honours in the opening round from Bradley Turner from Ben Sayer, neither of whom are in the final today, although Ben Sayer was good in qualifying. So it's a very different look, but one constant, if you like, being Dave Bellamy up front, even though that gap is coming down. But of course, the pressure is still on this man, David Ellis, to try to find a way past him. Ellis's car with the Proctor's coaches backing as both of them go for the Joker lap company owned by Kevin Proctor that we used to see with great success in the supercar class and there nose to tail look because Ellis has closed right up under braking as they went for the Joker chicane now is he going to be able to maintain that pace it looks like the gap stretches again in fact as they come out the other side and that now means that they're just gapping Ellis a little is Bellaby once more but he's under attack no question about it the pressure is on as they make the climb once again up the hill Darren Bleasdale has got himself up past Steve Brown as well on the Joker lap, so we've had the change for third place now as the leader, Dave Bellaby, continues to push on. The wind from the supercharged engines as they drop down the hill once more into Paddock, turn right. David Ellis is throwing everything at this. He's getting a little bit nearer to the back of Dave Bellaby, but Dave's experience means that as long as he doesn't make a mistake, he should be good to hang on in there as Ellis gets the power down, looks for a way around on the outside now, maybe as they come off the loose, but 
even if he does get the outside line, he's going to have to be oh so brave on the brakes. He can't get the outside nor the inside then for the next corner of the elbow because Bellamy positions the car exactly where it needs to be. Ellis forced out a little bit wide. That costs him a length as they head up the hill now. It's been a great drive, this, by David Ellis to bring the gap down, to have a real challenge. The two teammates effectively run nose to tail as they drop into paddock. But it looks like Bellaby has just about done enough now. Across the loose. Checkered flag at the ready. And it is a win, the second of the season, the second of the weekend for Dave Bellaby. David Ellis chases him home, but he couldn't quite do it. So Dave Bellaby it is who scores honours in the second round of the BMW Mini Rallycross Championship. David Ellis takes second ahead of Darren Bleasdale with Steve Brown fourth, Abby McGuinness fifth and Nick Abbott rounds out the top six. So a great scrap between the two and in the sunshine and in front of a very enthusiastic crowd here. It's Dave Bellaby who triumphs and that is a second victory of the weekend. Daughter Paige, Super National Racer, walks over to say, well done, Dad. Great result. Well, it's another win for Dave Bellaby in the BMW Minis. Double whammy at Lyndon Hill. Crikey, what a great weekend. Yeah, can't be any better for this. This good little car. We're, um, yeah, we're on top of the game with this. <sighs> what can I say? I'm getting too old for this. No, you're not, you're not. <laughs> How did you find that second round then out there? Uh, it's getting hard and bumpy, but there's a lot, of, lot going on out there. So, um, but really the, it's, it's all held up fairly well. We've had, a good, we've had a good meeting, a good weekend. Really enjoyed the weekend. And Dave Ellis tried to catch you, but he failed. I think he caught me. I think I, think I had to be a little bit cunning again with Dave to hold him back. That's how it goes, isn't it? Yeah, great season opener though, isn't it? Double yes. whammy, yeah. maximum points or whatever, and silverware, and you must be one very happy man. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's um, great. I don't think I'll be in it again, though, no, because um, Drew will be back in it next time, so that might be my retirement, that. I don't think so, but you have done her proud, and yeah. you're never too old, because you've showed it. It's a class act from you, Dave. Well done Thank to you. Thank you very much. The Swift Sport Rally Cross final is go as the lights go to green. A good getaway by Max Weatherly as the cars accelerate then down towards the loose section for the first time. And who is it going to be that secures the race lead? Max Weatherly, quickest in Q2 and Q3, just forces away through. Luke Constantine was quickest in Q1. And James Chisman, who was the runner-up to Luke Constantine in the first round of the championship, are well worth keeping an eye to. But it's Weatherly at the moment that leads Luke Constantine. And then it's James Chisman third as they make their way round the devil's elbow for the first time. Max Weatherly is another driver that knows exactly what he's doing in these cars. Very experienced, swift competitor. And somebody else that we didn't see very much of last year with all the dramas going on to try to get a season underway. It ended up being a limited season, just the two events held at Lyndon, three rounds in total. But for Max Weatherly, he's back with a full season of competition and showing exactly how quick he is. So Luke Constantine, the round one winner then in the pink car, goes there, look for the joker lap. He'd lost a couple of lengths anyway to Max Weatherly, and that opens the door for the yellow car of James Chisman now to try to close down that gap. Weatherly was third in the opening round behind Chisman. Constantine there was the winner. So a shuffle of the order now in this second round of the championship as Weatherly hustles on into the devil's elbow. Turns through the corner, makes the climb up the hill now. Now, James Chisman in second spot, doing his level best to bring down that gap to try to get onto the tail of the leader and also push on so that he can clear Luke Constantine when he has to serve his joker lap. Dropping down towards Paddock now, through that right across the loose. But there is Max Weatherly, making life look pretty easy, in fact, up front as he pulls clear now. James Chisman presses on behind him, but he's not really being able to make the inroads that he needs as they go round Chessons once more. Heading back towards the tarmac. And the very enthusiastic crowd at Lyddon this weekend, delighted to see such good entries, good racing and good weather. It's a great atmosphere at Lyddon today, the spiritual home of Rallycross in the UK. And now the climb up the hill once more as it is. Max Weatherly then fending off his challenge of James Chisman. Luke Constantine, for the moment, having served his joker lap, is in fourth place. But, of course, he'll gain some of that ground back when others have to cycle through their slower joker laps. So 
James Chisholm across the loose. Is he going to be able to do anything at all about Max Weatherly at the moment? The evidence says no, because Weatherly looks so, so strong. Quickest in Q2, quickest in Q3, and he's on a roll right now. From Chesson's back to the tarmac. Brake hard, bit of a lock-up, tyre squeal from Max Weatherly, but that is proof that he's absolutely on the limit, pushing as hard as he possibly can. To the hairpin once more, go the top two. Look back, there you can see in fourth place, the man that is the championship leader effectively coming into today's round. Round one winner, Luke Constantine. He's trying to get places back, of course, on the Joker lap. Harry Volkard is the man ahead of him. World Touring Car racer most recently, but Harry switching disciplines, trying something completely different. And he was sixth in the opening round here. Max Weatherly then still looking strong up front. And whatever James Chisman tries, there's no answer. Chisman now jokers, and that's going to put him back behind Luke Constantine. Only just, but it is behind. So this now becomes the battle for, in real terms, second place because Harry Volkhard has yet to joker. There to the outside line, James Chisman knows that now is his time to pounce if he can do it. Tries to get the line going up the hill. They've both jokered, so this is a proper battle for position. Side by side, inside is Constantine, outside Chisman. Together they turn out of the hairpin and James Chisman forced out a little bit wide, but he's on his toes, still on the outside line, he's on the power. Can he drive all the way around the outside into Paddock? It's a brave effort, but it comes to nothing. You've got to be so, so committed, so confident to try the outside there. And James Chisman certainly thought about it. It does look like he's the quicker of the two, but he just can't find a way by. There's contact there as he gets into the back of Constantine. But in fairness to James Chisman, he didn't then force the issue and risk a penalty. So he backed out of that, knowing there was a mistake on his part, knowing there was contact. The chequered flag is imminent as well as the cars now turn their way through the devil's elbow. And while this great battle is raging on for second place, it is gifting Max Weatherly the win because he's building the advantage. He's getting away up front. So from a third in the opening round to a win in round two, Big upturn in fortunes for Max Weatherly, who comes there now down towards Paddock. It is going to be a race win in the second round of the Swift Sport Rallycross Championship for him, seemingly there for second and third. Luke Constantine is just ahead as the flag is waved. Max Weatherly wins round two at Lydden. Second is Luke Constantine, James Chisman right on his tail for third. But a great drive by Max Weatherly as he comes through to score the win. So Max Weatherly victorious in round two of the Swift Sport Rallycross Championship ahead of Luke Constantine and James Chisman third. Harry Volkhard fourth ahead of David Watt with Bradley Durdin rounding out the top six. So for Luke Constantine, a win and a second, but Max Weatherly third and first over the two days at Lydden. And he is absolutely delighted with a first win of 2021. Hell yeah! <laughs> well, we've got a bit of an elated Max Weatherly here. <laughs> Crikey, that means a lot to you, doesn't uh, that it? That was quite a good day, that was. Um, yeah, I had a bit of a struggle yesterday, so, well, yesterday, so Saturday. Um, yeah, it was quite nice to actually get the result where I thought I should be, and um, everything just went perfectly. The right, start was great, Joker was awesome. I'm quite happy with that, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. it's quite, uh, quite okay. a meaningful one. It's been uh, so long. I, I didn't do the whole 2020. Uh, like Coming back here, seeing everyone, doing the Five Nations, absolute privilege. It's been awesome. Yeah, right. Joker always plays the tactics. You played it well, didn't you? Oh, yeah, I was close, though. I, I, as soon as I saw Joe Luke disappear, I couldn't see him anywhere else. So I was really nervous about where he's going to end up. Saw James disappear. Right, this is it, last one. So I absolutely went for it on the last one. And the car is phenomenal at the moment. Horizon Motor Group have done a fantastic job. And quite frankly, I couldn't have wished for a better day. There was plenty of action in the Group B and four-wheel drive final as Andy Grant's Ford Focus took on Steve Harris with the Ford RS200. Two iconic cars from the history of the sport. Grant in the Focus held on. The RS200 in the Mark Rennison tribute colours chased the round one winner home. But Andy Grant always had enough in hand to come through for a second win of the weekend at Lyndon. The stars of tomorrow in the Motorsport UK Junior Rallycross Championship entertained as well. After a win in round one, Owen Robbins was the man to beat, but Finlay Scott and Max Langmay topped Q1 and Q2 respectively before Robbins struck back in Q3. In the final, it was Max Langmay though who 
came out on top. Lyndon Hill is going to definitely hold some very, very special memories for you, isn't it? Yeah, after um, Q1 with the bonnet flying up, I'd, yeah, I didn't expect it to happen in Q2, the A final. Well, you've done really, really well. Well done to you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. The ever spectacular RX 150s had been won in round one by Patrick O'Donovan, and he was quickest in Q1 and Q3 for round two, with Steve Jones bettering him in Q2. The two were tied together in the final. O'Donovan held the early lead, but Jones tried everything he could to find a way by. Nothing was left on the table as the two of them plunged down towards Paddock. In the end, it was Patrick O'Donovan who just held on to do the double. Really, really good race for Stephen. I, from the first lap, I think I, I didn't have any rest. <laughs> it's all through the final there. It just kept me on the toes every every single lap. Yeah, it was close. Yeah, just trying to look for a way to get up next to him or yeah, upset him a little bit, but <laughs> I couldn't do it. So yeah, he did well. For something different, let's go all electric. A grid of Fiat 500Es. The lights go green. Don Flitney on pole position in this new electro class. This is the final. And it's the future of rallycross as the motor industry, as motorsport goes electric. Don Flitney takes on Rob Gibson and David Holford, both of them from Retro Rallycross. There's Charlie Fraser and Dan Welch, who won the opening round of the championship, a former touring car racer whose father, John, of course, a real rallycross legend, British champ and a man who won the European rounds at various venues, as well as winning the Grand Prix, of course, at Brands Hatch, his famous victory. It is David Holford, though, that leads the way as they come down through Paddock, and he's under attack. These cars might not be the noisiest, they might not be the fastest, but they are little pocket rockets, and they've delivered plenty of drama all weekend. David Holford adapting from his Group B Audi Quattro to come into electric rallycross, little Fiat 500, but the Irish driver it is who hangs on with lots of task wheel through the devil's elbow. Dan Welch up to third place now, number 23, the round one winner going after race preparation expert Dom Flitney. There he is in second spot. Battle is on between Rob Gibson and Charlie Fraser. Rob Gibson checks his mirrors, goes through. And the Cheshire driver gains fourth place. From bewinged Porsches to Metro 6R4s to a Fiat 500. More variety in Rob Gibson's career as the cars dance over the loose. Checkered flag flies and David Hallford it is who wins with Don Flitney second. Dan Welch takes third ahead of Rob Gibson and Charlie Fraser rounds out the five. Two different winners in the Electro class at Lyndon this weekend. Congratulations, you must be really pleased with that result. Yeah, it's a, it's a steep learning curve, even though they're not the fastest things. They're, you know, they're quite technical to maximise the speed you have gotten, the power you've gotten, the brake, and then I don't think I was the fastest out there, but I just managed to hang on to the end. Young Flintney seems to have to measure me, but you know, come the flag we held on just, but it was very good, good fun and very interesting. Yeah, yeah it's great to get involved in this championship. You know, the yeah. future is electric. Uh, it is. Whether we like it, we don't like it. I think we have, the future will be electric and the brave ones who take the step today will probably pay dividends later. From the future to the past, we get set for the retro rallycross final. The grid is formed and the lights go green. It's Tony Lynch on pole position and Simon Hart makes a slow start there. Look in the Escort Mark 1 in the Haynes of Maidstone John Taylor tribute colours, but it is Terry Moore who won the opening round of the championship who hits the front as the cars make their way across Chessons for the first time and a very sideways Tony Lynch loses bags of time there by getting all crossed up. We've lost Steve Cousins, who was third in the first round. He's got suspension damage, so missing from the grid as the swift tune prepared. Mini accelerates up the hill. Terry Moore leads them, getting away in the square nose Mini Clubman shape. Ahead of Tony Lynch, there is Rob Buckmaster's Ford Fiesta Mark II going through in third spot. And Simon Hart trying to fight back in the Mark I Escort now. downhill they go but Terry Moore is fleeing the scene isn't he? He was the fastest in Q1. Tony Lynch there in the much more modern in comparison. Toyota MR2 fastest in Q2 and Q3. That car that was a uh, rally car found up in Scotland made into a rallycross machine 
And Tony Lynch, who's rallied, he's co-driven, he's rally-crossed, he's won races, he's won championships, runs under the Team Geriatric banner, and he powers his way now back onto tarmac as the cars head to the Devil's Elbow. Whether or not Lynch can do anything about Terry Moore, however, is a moot point, because it looks as though that Mini is getting away. Ford battle on for third place now, look, because Rob Buckmaster has been reeled in by Simon Hart. The Mark 1 Escort going back to the early 70s, the Mark 2 Fiesta to the mid 80s. Simon Hart goes wide, gets on the dustier outside line, and that just compromises him a little as they drop downhill now. Lines up for a move on the inside line. Is he going to be able to go through? He tries, but Rob Buckmaster bravely sits on the outside of him. They bounce across the loose, and Simon Hart has to give way. He gets all sideways, sorts out the slide, but loses pace as a result. We've had a change for the race lead, though, because now, look, Tony Lynch is ahead. The Toyota is ahead of the Mini as they break for the elbow. This is Terry Moore's view. It looks calm on the outside. It's all action on the inside, side by side up the hill. The Mini to the outside line. Round the outside goes Moore, and he's got the lead back. Great battle between these two. Now Terry Moore goes back into the race lead. Can he hang on to it this time? Tony Lynch is right with him as they come through Paddock. Throw that little chicane, avoid the curb. Well, Tony Lynch doesn't avoid it. He clambers up the curb, and he now goes to the outside line, and there's contact. He hits Moore as they go into Chessons. That knocks the mini offline. So Tony Lynch goes back into the lead, and Terry Moore will not like that. He's going to fight back. We know that mini is quick, so can he do it all over again? Yes, he can. He closes right up as they get to the Devil's Elbow. Lynch sideways then as the back wags on the MR2. And Terry Moore has to do it all over again. Challenges on the outside line now as they come out the hill. Swoops around the outside, goes back in front. Together they run down the hill. So Terry Moore hangs on to the advantage now. Is this the lap on which he's able to secure the deal? Tony Lynch right there behind him in the four sideways. MR2 lines up to have a go again through the chicane. He's going to end up with a curb, surely, and it does. Terry Moore is still in charge, though. Across the loose section of the circuit they come. So Terry Moore with the front-wheel drive mini tries to break away. Tony Lynch in the more sideways. Toyota is there in second spot, but... After a win and a second, Moore and Lynch in round one. It looks like it's going to be the same order here, despite the best efforts of Tony Lynch. But getting all sideways like that only scrubs off speed. Wiper on now for Terry Moore. He's not the stalk, I think, in the heat of battle, as there you have going through in second spot, Tony Lynch. Down to Paddock they come. Checkered flag is at the ready, and it's going to be two out of two this weekend at Lynch for Terry Moore. Really good drive. Got the lead, lost the lead, got it back, worked hard, and there is the win. Terry Moore takes victory. Tony Lynch comes home in second place. The third is going to be Rob Buckmaster's Fiesta. Simon Hart fourth in the Mark I Escort, but a really happy Terry Moore takes victory. Well, let's catch up with the winner of the retro, shall we? Terry Moore, congratulations. You must be thrilled with that result. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and tired as well. Yeah, I've <laughs> oh, I had a lot of problems with the car today. The clutch went. That's why I didn't go out in the, in the other heats. Um, but, so I thought I'd leave it, wait to start on the back and uh, crashed it into gear and away we went. But it, it won as good as I was. It gave me a hard run and it was a good race. We had a bit of touching. But it was good. Yeah, you're really referencing good. Tony Lynch, though. I mean, it was a good tussle out yeah, there yeah, from yeah, a spectator's yeah. point of view. Yeah, 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 it was. It was really good. It was quick. That's the quickest I've um, raced against him, actually. So he's, uh, I think, them couple of heats that he had on his own, he sort of learnt a bit more of the track. So, uh, yeah, yeah, no, good on it. It was a good race. We are set for the Super National and Super 1600 final here at Lyddon. It's a busy grid and it's going to be an exciting race, this. The Super Nationals at the front, the lights go green. Paige Bellaby it is who accelerates away, eager for points because a blown engine put her out on day one of the weekend. Slavomir Volok is there in second place and Jason Bleasdale, who won round one, goes for the Joker. We've also got the Super 1600s, Craig Lomax, Darren Scott, Phil Chicken to keep an eye to. But up front is Paige Bellaby, then in the low-line Lotus, who leads the big BMW. Slavomir Volok, the very spectacular BMW M3, is right there in second spot. 
been a good day for the Bellabys because Dad Dave had a win in the mini final. Can Page do it in Super National? Let's see. Slavomir Volok then with the very tail happy BMW right there behind the Lotus Exige as they drop down to Paddock. Volok was third in the opening round of the championship after a penalty for gaining an advantage. He was quickest in Q2. Page Bellaby quickest in Q3. Volok now goes for the Joker. And Jason Bleasdale, who has already jokered, he was the man quickest in Q1, might now be able to jump ahead of the BMW. Let's see. There are the Super 1600s going through. The round one winner, the Belgian driver Nick Snoys, has had to go back to Belgium to try to beat all the COVID travel dramas. So we've lost him for today. But it's Craig Lomax taking on Darren Scott and Phil Chicken in that contest. There's Darren Scott heading up towards us. The Keeler in the Vauxhall Astra behind. And Craig Lomax has fallen in now behind Slavomir Volok after his joker lap. Now, where is Volok in relation to Jason Bleasdale? He's ahead of him. So Slavomir has stayed ahead on the joker. Downhill he goes. the loose section they go then but up front Paige Bellamy he's trying to make good her escape now as to the joker lap goes Lee Keeler in the Vauxhall Astra he gets out of the way of the charging Slavomir Volok the super national class especially when mixed with super 1600s does give great variety and the Astra there comes back from the joker this is the Lotus that has yet to joker Paige Bellamy turning her fortunes around after sitting out most of day one with that blown engine climb up the hill now this is the super 1600 fight you've got Craig Lomax there just ahead of Phil Chicken Phil to the outside line but the very experienced Craig Lomax hangs onto the place almost a brush between the two as Paige Bellamy now dives across the loose section once more the super 1600s squabble on Jason Leesdale look is now starting to inch up onto the back of Slavomir Volok. Now this is going to be for Super Nationals second place. That's Darren Scott just running ahead of them, who is the leader of Super 1600 at the moment. But Volok is being caught. Look, Jason Bleasdale is getting closer and closer. That Vauxhall VX220 hustles on as they come up the hill to the hairpin now. Break for the corner. Turn through that tight right. Don't go out too wide, don't get too sideways or you'll scrub off the momentum. Slavomir Volok using all of the road and then a bit as he tries to fend off the challenge now of Jason Bleasdale. Down through Paddock they come across the loose, hit the tarmac briefly and then back to the loose down towards Chesson's Drift and that I'm afraid out of the race is Lee Keeler. The Vauxhall Astra going no further. But Paige Bellamy though, the Joker is completed as she hung on to the lead just about. But Volok, look with all of that power, is right there. And Jason Bleasdale is in the mix as well. Volok to the inside line, couldn't quite do it, but oh, so close into the corner. Out of the devil's elbow, climb the hill now. Bleasdale all over the back of the BMW. Slavomir Volok trying to get past the Lotus. And Bleasdale up the inside, there's contact between the two. And through he goes gets onto the grass, they both get sideways and Bleasdale is delayed out of all of that, he sorts out the dramas. Paige Bellamy though, he's on target for the win it seems. Replay here on board Jason Bleasdale's car, look he goes for the inside line, there's a kind of gap, contact between the two but there's something breaking all of that because coming out of the corner, Jason Bleasdale struggling down the hill. He has kept going though, so Bleasdale third, although some way back, and Volok chases after Paige Bellamy, but the gap has widened after that tussle between Volok and Bleasdale. Paige Bellamy then looking as though she's done enough, down through the devil's elbow. The BMW, real fan favourite. It's big, it's noisy, it's always sideways, and Slavomir Volok, very spectacular driver indeed. Into the hairpin now. The London-based pole in second place, and Paige Bellamy. It's not far from the Croft circuit up in North Yorkshire. It's a real shame we don't go to Croft anymore. Comes into the loose section of Paddock with Volop way, way wide, all sideways behind. Check and flag falls. Paige Bellaby wins round two of Super National. Slavomir Volop comes through for second place. And who is going to be the Super 1600 winner? Darren Scott is the first one to emerge from Paddock. There he is on target for fourth place. And Darren Scott, who had to miss the final for round one, wins the final in round two. So Paige Bellaby wins the Super National class ahead of Slavomir Volok and Jason Bleasdale. Darren Scott triumphs in Super 1600 ahead of Craig Lomax and Phil Chicken.
very happy Paige Bellaby can celebrate. Now, a blown engine on day one and a race win on day two. And there's a very proud dad there as well to join in the celebrations. Drew Bellaby at home watching on FaceTime. What a result, Paige. I mean, you're thrilled. Good for you. Congratulations. You must Thank be delighted. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's been an absolute up and down weekend, to say the least. Uh, engine blew up Saturday. I changed it on the day, hoping I'd be able to make it back out, but didn't. Really disheartened. We we'll come out. Engine for a couple of years ago. Not quite as got as much power as the old one. We absolutely smashed it. Over the moon. Great results for the family as well, Absolutely. right, this weekend? Yeah, he's not so bad for a granddad, is he? <laughs> <laughs> no doubt your sis will be well chuffed with that. Yeah, she's buzzing, Hiya. she's there, look. Hiya, congratulations, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> They've done you proud. They've done you proud. Well, I told my niece I'd win for her oh. and uh, I'd hate to disappoint. Oh, well done you, congratulations. <laughs> Thank mate. you very much. I made my way over to see Roger Thomas's Ford Fiesta because uh, Roger has claimed pole for the final of the supercars, but he did have some problems in the semi-finals and the mechanics, as you can see, are working furiously to try and get the car ready for that all-imported final. So now it's a battle against time to see if he will indeed start the final here at Lyddon Hill. The cars are lined up in the assembly area for the super car final and on pole it's Welshman Roger Thomas. Let's try and grab a word with him. Roger, quick words. I know it's been a stressful hour or so, but how are you feeling? Not bad. Yeah? Slightly stressed, but we're here now, so... All systems go, ready to rock then. We'll see. Good luck. Thank you. Let's join our commentator, David Addison. Back, Sam, we are ready for the supercar final then. The cars are all lined up and this promises to be a really good race. It is wide open then. Drivers look towards the lights that go green. Roger Thomas blasts away from pole position. Bad start though by Roberts Vittles. The round one winner must have a problem because the car staggers off the line. Ollie O'Donovan goes for the joker straight away. Thomas hits the front then. Derek Toehill is the man up alongside Andy Scott battling for second place and Scott gets forced out wide. That's going to cost him second place. So it's Roger Thomas understeering his way into the devil's elbow. That becomes oversteer as the tail wags and Derek Toehill takes over the race lead now. Andy Scott mows the lawn on the way up the hill for the first time, but it is Derek Toehill, the Irish champion, ahead of in second place. Then Roger Thomas, the Welshman chasing the Irishman. It's Andy Scott third and then for fourth, Mark Donnelly up the inside of Tristan Uppendam. Now Donnelly had turbo issues in his semi-final. He's making good progress here. The other one to watch is going to be Ollie O'Donovan having jokered early to see where that's going to put him at the end of the race because now others cycle their joker laps. You can see Andy Scott bails. He gets it out of the way as the top two break clear. Tristan Ovenden then is third. There is O'Donovan and he's got ahead of Scott. Look on the joker. Derek Toho leads the way. Roger Thomas behind him in second place. Tristan Uppenden in third, albeit some way back at the moment. So Derek Toehill, who we didn't see last year in the championship, sadly, again, because of the travel dramas that prevail around coronavirus, comes down into Paddock, and he's being chased hard by Roger Thomas. We didn't see Roger in the opening day of the event here, with him, but he is going really well today, despite a fire at the end of his semi-final. Goes for the joker now. Now this is going to be absolutely crucial to see whether it benefits him. Tristan Ovenden goes through up into second place yet to Joker and Thomas is slow coming off the Joker lap so O'Donovan and Scott both get ahead of him. Is that a problem for Roger Thomas? Let's see. Derek Tohill's getting away and building the lead now. That's worked out really nicely for him but Roger Thomas suggesting that he may not be long for this race. It looks like he's got a problem all of a sudden and that could be connected to the dramas that he had in the semi-final. O'Donovan versus Scott. They clashed on the opening day here at Lyddon. Let's see what happens on day two. Mark Donnelly, the reigning champion in GB1, plunges downhill as well as O'Donovan goes a little wider than does Scott. Really good to have Andy Scott back in the championship. The Albertech boss, very accomplished rally crosser. He's on the back of British champion Ollie O'Donovan now. He's also coming under attack because Roger Thomas and then Mark Donnelly are behind. But as long as these fall squabble, that'll help Derek Tohill in the final analysis. 
to the devil's elbow they come through that tight left Mark Donnelly a bit more sideways than the others that costs him a fraction of time as Andy Scott thinks about attacking on the inside of Ollie O'Donovan's Fiesta here Once more downhill. So O'Donovan, who switched away from his focus to the Fiesta a couple of seasons back, he's making it go very, very well. But look behind him, Andy Scott is getting closer and closer. Derek Turhill is still the man in charge up front. Derek, there he is, coming off the Joker lap. Is he going to hang on to the advantage? It's going to be close, but yes, he does keep the race lead. You can see how close O'Donovan is, though. He jokered on the first lap, and he's right up the inside there, going into the elbow. He's up the curb, launches himself alongside Derek Tohill. It's elbows out and stuff. The two Irish drivers go side by side. They touch again, but Derek Tohill is a hard nut to crack, and he is hanging on to that lead. And now Andy Scott comes up on the inside of O'Donovan as well, trying to benefit from the delay. Scott gets forced onto the grass, but keeps on coming. O'Donovan is perhaps the most uncompromising of drivers. Look at this. Scott up the inside, breaks late, locks up, scrabbles up the inside. O'Donovan under contact again. Doesn't give him any room. Elbows him towards the grass and says, that second place is mine. This is how Andy Scott saw it all. So he prizes open the door there. O'Donovan comes across on him right now. And that puts Andy Scott on the grass. And he has to back out of it because the tyre barrier looms. O'Donovan up the kerb. Scott right there behind him. Scott looking the quicker of the two, but he can't usurp that Fiesta as there. Tristan Uppenden has jokered. That's going to put him into fourth, just ahead of Roger Thomas. So he's actually benefited on the joker, moves ahead of the Welsh driver. Derek Tohill is getting away up front now as O'Donovan tries to fend off Andy Scott. Together they run up the hill now, and Uppenden might have a problem because that car is very sideways. It looks like something might have gone in the suspension. It might have been after a jump, it might have been after contact, but look, the rear suspension, the rear tracking of the red car, the red Citroen of Tristan Ovenden, he's all out of kilter. Through paddock they come, so Ovenden has got to limp round for points now. Check and flag flies, it is a, a drama in the background, look, that is Ovenden off the road, and I think Roger Thomas has gone with him. Derek Turhill takes the race win, Ollie O'Donovan second, Andy Scott third, it is Mark Donnelly fourth ahead of Julian Godfrey, and there, Tristan Lovenden limps to the line. And let's have a look at what happened. Lovenden's car clearly has a problem. Something has broken within it. And Roger Thomas gets into the side of him, turns him around, and both of them off the road. So drama at the last corner from another angle. There it is, the contact made. But Tristan Lovenden was trying to limp home with broken suspension. And the car getting all crossed up in front of Roger Thomas. Derek Tohill it is who wins round two of the championship ahead of Ollie O'Donovan and Andy Scott. Mark Donnelly fourth from Julian Godfrey, Tristan Ovenden classified sixth. And the round one winner, Robert Vitols didn't even do a lap. So a bittersweet weekend for him. But it is a very happy Derek Tohill who has bounced back in style. Celebration time for the Irish crew. Derek Tohill wins at Lyddon. So it's the second place for Ollie O'Donovan in round two here at Lyndon Hill. What a race, that was good racing. That was a hard race, yeah. But both Derek and I stuck on the back row, so I don't know how we got through, but we got through anyway. <laughs> That's all that counts. It's incredibly hot today, Ollie. I mean, the temperatures, but talk me through your own personal race, because you worked your way up the leaderboard, didn't you? Yeah, I, I didn't have a great day qualifying. I mean, I struggled all day long. We had a turbo go, did we? The turbo boost pipe probably wasn't fitted correctly. So, you know, we took the lead of two heats and we ended up being last on both. So we were quick enough when the car was right. But, I, you know, little niggle problems all day. And the semi final, we should have won it. We gave it a little problem, but uh, I think it all came together for the final. Well, it's an Irish one too, so it's the day of the Irish, wouldn't you say? I'm telling you, there'll be some party tonight. <laughs> well done, you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Well, what a final that proved to be. Absolutely phenomenal here at Lyndon Hill and a jubilant Derek Tohill, and rightly so. Congratulations, you must be thrilled. Oh, well, that was hard earned. Really, really tough weekend, and the competition is just brilliant out there. It's really strong. So, to take the win from six on the grid after a bit of an unluck unlucky semi-final, yeah. But we worked hard for us. <laughs>
team did. We stuck with it. We were a little bit rusty yesterday. We were just all a little bit not ourselves, but we worked hard at it and got it, got into the groove eventually. So, yeah, what a unbelievable. From a spectator's point of view, that was rally cross driving at its very best. But talk me through your own personal race. Well, Thomas just talked me through it on the radio. I knew it was tight all the time, but it's so hot out there that you can't push too hard because the tyres are going to go off. So you're trying to find a happy medium because the weather here today is just awesome. But we had to, we couldn't push too hard, so we're trying to push hard enough, but without overheating the tyres. And I didn't realise Ollie was going to be quite that close. But brilliant to get a, another Irish man second place in Lytton Hill. So, yeah, Roland Modelo, myself and Ollie should have a good time there. Huge congratulations to you, Derek. Well done. Thank you very much. So that concludes all the action from round two at Lydon Hill. And what a day of racing it's been. From the home of British Rallycross, it's goodbye and see you next time.